Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today I'm going to use these two router bits in my router table to make this lovely shaker style door. So let's get started. When you look at a door, the styles are always the full length of the door, so you don't need any measurement changes with those. The rails, however, you do. And when we look at the end, so when we're trying to figure out how long these rails need to be, we need to take into consideration how long these tongues are, because there's the end of the wood there, and there's the other end there. So we're going to be cutting that part out of it. And here's how we figure that out. There's the four components I'm going to use to make my door. Now, the styles I already know are a foot long, so they're fine. They're the full length of the door. I don't have to do any more cutting with them. But the rails, I do. And I've cut these extra long because I don't really know how long to cut them yet. And the way I'm going to figure that out, because I want this door to be 10 inches wide, so the way I'm going to figure that out because I had some scrap pieces, and you'll always have some scrap pieces, I put in my tongue cutting bit. And look at this, I've cut two tongues, and now all I need to do is measure these, and as it turns out, they're seven eighths of an inch. So whatever, here's how I'm going to figure out how long I need to cut these. So. I always work with two inch pieces of wood. That's just the easiest way to do that. And to make a 10 inch wide door, what I need to do is I know if I go 10 inches like this, I need to take two inches off this side. So two inches off this side, plus two inches off this side. So 10 take away two is eight take away another two is six, and add seven eighths, because those two together equaled seven eighths, so six and seven eighths. That's how long this needs to be for me to make a perfectly 10 inch wide door. Now the next thing I'm going to do is mark all of my wood. And in my case, you can use a pencil. I like to use blue tape because it stands out to me and I know where it is. Now this is going to be, what I'm putting on here, this is going to be the back of every component for the door. So every time I cut a piece, I know that I want to be seeing blue tape. And the reason for that is this. When I adjust the bit here, I'll know that they're all wherever, whatever bit that I'm using, that all of the bits will be keyed to the base plate. So the distance between the base plate and the bit, that's going to be how I'm going to measure it. So these will always be consistent no matter what component. If I'm making 20 doors or one door, they'll all be consistent. So that's the front of the door. Now when I installed this bit, before I even installed the bit, because I'm working with a split fence, I made sure that my fence was even all the way across and I just used a ruler to make sure that it doesn't hang up when I move it across. The other thing that I did when I installed this bit is I did something called isolating the bearing and I'm just going to release the fence so that it'll move back and forth. And what I'm going to do now, you see there's a bearing in there. What I want to do, I want to make that bearing absolutely equal with the fence. And I can just, all I need to do is move one side of it so that it's just touching, just barely moving that bearing. In this case, the material that I'm using is three quarters of an inch. I know that my tongue is a quarter inch wide, so basically I need a quarter inch on each side. And if you look carefully at this, you'll see that in my rough cut here, I'm off a little bit. And if I put that through there, you can actually see that this bit is just a little bit high, so I need to lower it. And to do that, I use these little marking bars. I'll put a link on the, in the article on Woodwork Web. You'll be able to see those. These are the handiest little things for measuring. I think that's a little hard to see, but uh, I think you can just barely see that it's a little high. 
Now I always recommend running a test and usually you have some scrap left over uh, so it's best to do that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cut the rails and because the tape is on top I know that I can just turn them around like this. So this is where you want to make sure, this is why the tape is so important because you don't want to cut one on one side and then inadvertently flip it over like that because then your cuts are going to be off. So I'm going to cut both sides of these and I use one of these, this is just a push block with an absolutely square corner and I put these circles, semi-circles on here so that I know that I've tested them with a square to make sure they're absolutely square so that when I push these through they're square against the fence or flat against the fence, flat against my wood and that will give me a perfectly square uh, cut in there. The reason we always cut the tongue first is because we use it as a measurement to cut the groove. So I'm just going to take a moment now and put the groove bit in. Now when I put the new bit in, of course, I had to readjust the fence to do that. So I need to make sure now that I'm going to isolate that bearing again. This little test that I'm going to run, what I want to happen, I want that, I'm just going to touch that bit at the very end of this tongue. And what I want, I want to see the wood flaring on both sides, just barely so there's a little bit of flaring on the top and the bottom. And that means I've got that bit centered. If it's too high or too low, we'll actually see a little sliver of wood. So let's go ahead. I've said it, I think, the best I can. Let's see if we can uh, see how close I am. Well, that was pretty lucky. It looks like it's flared. You can see how it looks like it's flared on both sides. Uh, usually I'm high or low a little bit, but I got... I got lucky on this one, so let's go ahead and make those cuts and uh, see how this fits up. Okay, so this is, of course, the back of our door because what we were working on was to make this part absolutely even. So let's have a look there. It looks to me there's a tiny bit of sanding is going to make those perfect. In fact, I can't even feel a ridge there. So um, it doesn't work out quite that good every time, uh, but you know, the more you practice it, the better you get at it. And the, what I want to see right now is. How did we do, <laughs> how did we do getting our width here? And we wanted to go 10 inches and what do we have there? 10 inches, right on the money. Well, I went looking for a panel uh, and I found this, I've trimmed this down. It'll fit in the width. I'm just going to cut it to length and uh, we'll put it in as a temporary panel for right now, just so we have a finished door. And that's how easy it is to make doors. If you didn't follow every detail, don't forget, uh, it'll be detailed in the article on Woodwork Web, especially the measurements. Sometimes the measurements confuse people. Uh, but once you see it in writing, it's pretty easy. Uh, and that's just how easy it is to make doors on the router. I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.